I think the riders of the current standards and the current assessments do not always know what's in the best interest of my kids. I'm in the classroom every day and I know what's in the best interest of my kids. And this book is a call for teachers to, to keep that question central. What is the evidence of the language being manipulated in the chapter? There's a lot of oxymorons. Yeah. Okay, so give me an example. Give me a specific like example. Like war is peace. Okay. War isn't really peace. I want to control you. Where? And I want you to like me, and I'm not treating you nicely. Why is it to my advantage that we are at war with somebody else? I want my kids to track their thinking over time. And how they think about this event at the beginning of a novel may change 20, you know, 20 chapters later. How I interact with a poem that's unattached is very different than how I might interact uh, with a character I'm introduced in chapter one. And doing some sort of close reading about this character in chapter one uh, would not, be a, would not be a very good strategy in my classroom if we abandon that, now let's just move on. And even though I think the common core standards, those anchor reading and writing standards, are pretty darn good for secondary kids, they have blind spots. There are problems with them. What about the structure of this, the way it's structured, makes it an effective piece of writing? What is it about the way it's put together that helps you understand something that's kind of complex? Rather than just hitch my wagon to this movement, what I'd like teachers to do is to stay focused on those things that we know work when we teach kids how to read and write. This book is a reminder uh, for teachers that, that in any standards movements, I don't care who the creators of those standards movements are, they will always get something right and they will always get something wrong.